Now then, with the Don't Tell show, and we're back, back on the family patch. It's been a while, it's taken me forever actually to just sit down and press record, because, I don't know, the, the longer you leave something, the harder it is to get back to it, isn't it? So today's episode is brought to you by the words anxiety and procrastination. One or the other. One or the other. So yeah, the Don't Tell show has... Um, Attempted to be many things before, but it's now I'm, I'm streamlining it now. So the channel is basically going to be me talking about film in general, uh, film as it is nowadays, and generally supporting indie film because I feel it's the most important aspect of film, cinema, that sort of thing. Let's go straight into the first review. Dog Play Weekend is a 2022 feature film written and directed by Jamie Evans and available on YouTube for free, as is most exciting cinema these days. It follows three friends over the course of a weekend where they struggle to rehearse a play they are to perform the following Monday. So this is a film that I just kind of stumbled upon on YouTube. I I say kind of stumbled upon because I did actually watch uh, Jamie Evans' first feature film, Gonzo, quite a while back um, and really enjoyed it. The main thing I enjoyed about it was that I I have no idea what was real and what wasn't in there. And this film carries on in that vein but adds more layers by kind of having characters play characters within the characters inside the, the film. It was quite confusing. And I'm a sucker for that sort of blurring the lines thing, so this grabbed me from the get-go. You got me high on this now. You're saying you're really into getting My good. juice is flowing. Stop moving. Also because it has that sort of naturalistic Joel Haver style to it, which again adds to the blur. It's just getting blurrier and blurrier, isn't it? And like Joel Haver's films, a lot of it's shot in one just big wide shot and everyone moves around in the frame in, in real time to add that realism to it. But what this one does is it, rather than staying on the wide shot, it has this weird thing where it cuts in, where it has like cuttings or, or close-ups on there, but they're actually just, they're not separate shots. It just zooms into the frame like that. Well, cuts into the frame like that. And at first I, I looked away for a second, I looked back and the picture was really low quality and I was checking, has is my connection gone down or something? I thought something had gone wrong at first, but and I carried on watching, I thought, hang on, no, it's happening all the time. What is this? That confusion then becomes sort of stress and you're like, this is really, what? what is actually going on here? It's jumping about all over the place. It's sort of zooming in sometimes on things that feel sort of innocuous. Like why did I need to see his hand flapping in close there and all pixelated and stuff. And it just starts, started to really get to me. Say your line. Do I have a line? Wait, don't do this. Come on. You know, and the pace keeps changing and it's going in and out and it just seems completely random and it's just like stressing me out and my, I can feel my anxiety rising watching it. Thinking why, why is it doing this? And then I realised that's exactly what's happening in the film. The way that it's making me feel is exactly how the main character feels trying to get something together, trying to get his friends to, to rehearse this play and to take it seriously in the small amount of time that they have. And I'm like, whoa, I'm so into this film now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your cooperation. It's affecting me in a really great way and I'm thinking, would this, would this be the same if those were actual close-ups and there was, there was detail in the close-ups. If this was done in a traditional way, would it be having this effect on me? And I think the sort of, like recently I read something that Sidney Lumet had said about editing, that people don't notice the pace of editing, but they notice a change of pace in editing. So I think that that would work. The close-ups would work if the, if the change of pace was there to give you the stress, but it's not just the change of pace, it's the, the muddledness of it, the muddledness and the randomness and those pixels that just they just stress you out and it, it's like it's the opposite of escapism because I'm watching this and it's making me stress out and it's making me realize that actually nothing makes sense in the world all and it is all the world's just, just a pixels blur, 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 Well, anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is what I'm generally trying to say on this channel is that you won't get that in the mainstream because it makes no sense. But it doesn't matter whether it makes sense or not because the effect it had on me was to immerse me in the film and give me the same anxiety that the main character in the film was feeling. And you could only get that from messing about. And I'm not like, I'm not the sort of person that will read too much into a film and decide that he decided that that was a good thing to do. I, I, I think he shot it that way and then started messing about afterwards and was like, Oh yeah, this this really works. And he discovered something along the way from experimenting. And I think this is an important thing to discuss when watching films. Like I, I see so many discussions about cinematography and editing, and all they say is the editing's great or the cinematography's great, and they never say why. Like I think the cinematography and the editing in this film are great because of how they made me feel, the effect that they had on me. And I don't care that it's not polished, and I don't care if it was an accident. <laughs> that film made me feel the way that I think I should have felt, and how 
the characters felt and it made me empathize with those characters it also made me laugh a lot because i think the the, the acting in it's great the chemistry between the characters is great it made me empathize with the characters it made me like the characters because of their the characters the the constant humor and the conflict there and it also it, it really meant something to me because it really captured how i feel when i'm making a film when i'm trying to put all these pieces together someone was saying the other day that that's the, the collaborative part of it is the most enjoyable is the most enjoyable part of the whole process and I'm like is it really I think like ideas popping into your head in the first place for me is actually implementing them is the worst part <laughs> I mean going and getting stressed out and be like we've got to get this done in the next half hour or it's, or it's all ruined that stresses me out and this film stressed me out in that same way just the way that when that stress compounds and when it gets over there and you, and you suddenly completely forget how to communicate those ideas that you had at the start and then you end up forgetting them and they're not there and then you oh well I'll have to use it next time I don't know anyway Dog Play Weekend if you like films about filmmaking if you like Joel Haver films if you like feeling great levels of stress and creativity then you'll like it anyway links in the description as always we am the Dirt Tell Show if you liked please subscribe wherever it is there yeah I'll, I'll just go with it